What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about the best carry hero for each rank. I'm going to be going from Herald to Immortal and giving each bracket one hero that they should play that I think is optimal for that MMR. Because honestly, like, it, yes, the game changes depending on your MMR. I'm not going to say that there aren't aspects of the pros that you shouldn't use in your Herald games. I even see that commented a lot. It's like, Speed, can you make a Guardian replay? Because this Immortal game doesn't apply to me. No, everything applies. But regardless... It does change a little bit, so, you know, let's give some heroes. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential, but for now, let's hop into the video. So starting off for Herald, we have Alchemist, and... I'm sure, like, a lot of people, if they really sat down and could think of why or what hero I would pick for Herald, you could probably eventually guess Alchemist. Why? Well, the answer is actually really simple. The lanes don't get pressured in a lot of the lower tiers of Dota, and this is going to be a theme throughout kind of all the lower tier brackets, but specifically Herald, obviously, right? The lanes are not pressured, and there is an unbelievable amount of space and open waves to be farmed. Quite a bit a while ago, I made a Jakiro video where I flamed the Jakiro, basically saying, you know, there's a gajillion open waves, even as the position 5, you could get 6 slotted by 30 minutes. That's how much space there is if you're really looking for it. So if you play Alchemist, and you really focus on not showing up the fights and hitting your timings, you will crush! Every single game, you can become 20k net worth ahead at 20 minutes, and then the game's over. The throne legitimately will explode. Once you get that 6 item, you don't even have to hit the throne. It actually blows up. It genuinely, I'm not kidding, it blows up. But yeah, just to give you a brief lowdown on Alchemist, if you're interested in playing him and you are a lower MR, I would recommend this for, you know, Herald, Guardian, Crusader, Archon, doesn't matter, any, anywhere below 3k-ish. The build is... Phase Boots, Soul Ring Bracer, I do recommend Soul Ring now, he has quite a bit of mana issues without the mana regeneration from his ultimate, so Bracer, Soul Ring, Phase Boots, Radiance, and then there's a lot of paths you can go after that, you could go crazy things like Blink or Shadow Blade, just get a lot of kills, I used to do that in my pubs when I was learning Alchemist and it was unbelievably effective, so I would recommend Shadow Blade to anyone if you were just learning Dota, all you do is take out a concoction, you go Shadow Blade, you pop out of nowhere and you solo kill anyone, it's very very effective. And yeah, after that, it's it's pretty simple. You can just go things like BKB, Heart. Um, you can even go the Shiva's Octarine route. It's not that bad still. If you look up some old Alchemist replays, basically just go on Dota buff, look up what they buy, and you'll be golden. Now for next up, I have Spectre. And this is kind of the same aspect of Alk. Now, I hesitated on putting Spectre here because you can understand why I did. This hero scales well. It's one of the best late game heroes in Dota. Very hard to kill, does a lot of damage, and Haunt is obnoxious to team fight against. It's very distracting and it allows you to jump whoever you want in fights, which is obviously very, very strong. So why would I hesitate? Well, the one thing I will say is Spectre's laning stage is eh, but the reason why I was confident to put it in, in some aspects, is because the lanes do not get pressured that hard. You have to understand, if you compare a Guardian game to a Divine game, Ancient game, the lanes don't get pressured that hard. You, you don't have to trade that much HP. As long as you're chilling back and not forcing fights, fights will not come to you. They will not come to you. So someone like Spectre, more often than not, if you're chilling and using Dagger for the range creeps, you will get a lot of farm. You will. And then all you have to do is watch my Spectre guide that I recently put out. RTC played Spectre. You can simply take the tips from there and you will crush your Guardian games, right? All you have to do is go for the build that he went, right? The item build is very important and where you're farming and your farming patterns are exactly what you have to copy and you'll see them exactly in that video. Next up for Crusader, we have one of my favorite pub heroes in Dota. I recommend this hero to a lot of my students just because I think it's so dominant in pubs. I would, no joke, I legitimately put it for every bracket currently because I just think it's one of the best pub heroes and that is PL. Now also I was considering about substituting this with Naga. I think both of the heroes are generally similar where they're going for this three item timing. Diffusal, Manta, and a heart. Like no joke pl and naga both go for this timing and then once you hit that timing you destroy everyone in the entire game right it, with no contest you just destroy them if you get ahead 5 6k 7k net worth you will win the game and it's actually very very easy i don't know how else to put it right it, it's actually pretty easy what i recommend you do is you go into your game and you get to that timing do whatever you have to do to get to that timing and once again same thing with crusader people are bad at coordinating gangs they don't end the game well right they just push towers blind there's close to no smokes right the vision game is is meh it's there right this is where it starts you know beginning but at the same time trust me guys there's still so many open waves there's open waves in the divine game right there's open waves in the mortal games 
If you think it doesn't exist in Crusader, you're out of your mind. And that is why a scaling hero like PL is so good. And something I've also been talking to a lot of people about with PL is when you doppelganger, if you use the next unit hotkey, you can select one of your doppelgangers and people will fall for it 9 out of 10 times, right? Because they're not used to it in these low morale brackets. That's not what's going through their head. They're going to run after whatever the first thing that, that moves is, right? So if you go into a demo lobby, you pick PL, you doppel, and then instead of moving your main hero, you move an illusion by clicking, it's most likely tab for you, you will get away. Even on 100 HP, you can get away. It. You basically have a Song of the Siren on like a 10 second, whatever, 15 second cooldown. It's, I'm not kidding. It's so broken in solo queue. <laughs> it's like the same thing as Shadowblade. Like if you buy Shadowblade, even on a PL, it, oh my God, it, it, you can't die. You legitimately cannot die. Going into Archon, I have Wraith King and I really, really still like Wraith King for pubs. Why? Because I think if there's any hero that is actually very straightforward to play and maybe even is better than someone like a Spectre or a PL or even an Alk is Wraith King because really all you have to do is throw stuns in lanes, then max out your skeletons, build up your skeletons, skeletons and when you do that you go jungle and if you listen to me on this one and you build a Midas and a Radiance and do not fight until you have those items unless the enemy team is doing some really crazy dive and they're all low HP and you can go clean up if you simply focus on shoving the waves getting your timings and using your skeletons in the jungle you will win why because there's no possible way there's no possible way you can incorrectly execute raking in a fight like of course there's target priority there's you know casting spells mana usage these things all could come into play, and yes, you can mess up Wraith King. I, I played a game recently where a Divine player just ran out of mana multiple times on Wraith King, so yes, it can happen to the majority of the player base, I understand. But the main concept is you walk in, you throw out some stunts, and you auto-attack. Nice. But in all seriousness, um, the build, I just want to make it clear, Phase Boots, Midas, Radiance, Wand. The Wand is important! It gets me so mad when I see Wraith Kings without Wand. Bye! A wand. You might be like, well, it's fine, speed. I just simply will not use my stun. Because if I don't stun, how can I run out of mana for my ultimate? Especially if they have no mana burn, right? I'm a genius. You have to stun. Just stun and buy a wand, please. And then go blade mail, AC, BKB, blink, whatever you feel is best for the game, and you'll crush. Next up, we have Legend. And for Legend, I have Slark. Now, I think the game begins changing a little bit at Legend, you know, getting into Divine, where there's a bit more communication, there's a bit more synergy, still not too much lane pressure from what I've observed, but getting there, getting there. It's moving towards that, where people start hardcore counterpicking in lane, and lanes become much more difficult uh, if you're not using, you know, if you're not using all the, the proper laning techniques and buying a lot of reach ends. So I think Slark is really good, because if you counterpick in lane with Slark, and you actually spam the hero, you can get to the point where the slight lack of coordination, right, because I think if I had to write on a scale of 1 to 10 for coordination in the legend bracket, I'd probably put it at like a like a 4 or a 5. Somewhere around there, right? And for Slark, that means you're rarely going to die. So if you watch a ton of pro replays on Slark, you pay attention to exactly how they use their spells, when they use their spells, copy their item builds, you can crush these games. And I want to put out this format for you guys on how to play Slark. To say it basic, I recommend you pick him when you can counter your matchup, which is a lot of strength heroes, or you can, you know, just ask anyone in the game leap discord what they think about it but regardless then after you get off to a good start assuming you came out of a good lane you have you know your treads drums wand whatever it is phase drums wand this good stat build you go and you run at the enemy safe laner if you do this your impact will be through the roof legitimately through the roof why you might ask well slark is a hero that should be primarily taking lane creeps if you jungle a lot on slark you're doing something wrong this hero wants to run down lanes and create pressure why because even if it is a bad matchup let's say you have to trade with a ck and it's like eh, he's kind of outstanding out sustaining me when i'm trading the thing is you can steal his stats with essence shift you back into the trees regen up and do it again it's really easy it's really easy and actually very strong as well. Next up, we have Ancient Bracket. And this was a hero I actually considered putting for Immortal. And that is Bloodseeker. Why Bloodseeker? Very sustainable in lane, right? It's one of those heroes where as long as you're not in some abysmal matchup, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know. There's not a lot of matchups that really crush you. But like, Lena Tide could be difficult, right? If they gush into LSA, you'll take a ton of damage. But in a lot of matchups, Bloodseeker is very sustainable in the lane. And he's actually very good at scaling Not only that i i, I kind of skipped over the main part his mid game ability to fight if you copy these new like phase drums builds or basically the early game right click builds on bloodseeker you can take over the game for your team like you can win all the fights and for a lot of players to some extent i almost feel like i should have put this like lower because bloodseeker's hero that naturally can push in lanes quickly with his blood right and then is incentivized 
to fight, right? You're incentivized to fight. So that can be really beneficial for a little more games when people are, you know, not farming as much and doing a lot more fighting. But regardless, Bloodseeker in the Ancient Bracket, why? Good landing stage, can take over the mid game and scale so well. I think this hero is actually extremely underrated right now. When I do make my new underrated heroes, he will most likely be in it. Was he even in the last one? Oh, I can't even remember. <laughs> Probably. I think this hero is good for a while now. And so, you know, keep your eyes out for him. No matter what bracket you're in, try out Bloodseeker and take early points of blood, right? It is only 70 mana. It does not go up in a mana. This spell is broken in lane and broken in the game. It's so strong. Oh, and by the way, Nico Baby played it, and Nico Baby is one of the best carries in the world. Next up, we have the Divine Bracket, and that is going to be Void. I still think Void is one of the best carries in Dota on Dota Pro Tracker. When I last checked, he had a 53% win rate, and that is after nerfs. That is even when his chrono is now flat 140 seconds. Why? This hero is one of the most sustainable and reliable laners in Dota. You can first pick it and understand that, you know, there is legitimately not a lot of heroes that beat you in lane. One that comes to mind is, like, maybe Omni Knight. Even then, it's, like, playable. Legitimately playable. You you lose very little matchups and you have utility, uh, especially with this new like Treads Wraith Band Mjolnir build. You're going to have impact because you can split push effectively. I don't necessarily mean the towers, but you know, split up the map and you fight well early game because you have a lot of attack speed with the Wraith Bands and the Power Treads in combination with your Maelstrom. And then when you have Mjolnir, you solve Void's main issue, which is sometimes the ability to push out waves because you can Mjolnir shield the waves. It's super, super strong. And yeah, this hero just scales unbelievably well late game. I mean, there's no better hero. Like, if I had to do a top talent tree video on Dota, Void would potentially be number one. I mean, we just go down the list. 12 strength at level 10 is so good. When you have your stats plus the strength talent, you can just run at people like a Slark. In fact, sometimes you can even man up to Slark. It's that good. It's crazy. At level 15, you can take 70 time lock damage. At 20, you get time lock cast range, meaning that you're extremely mobile. You basically have a blink dagger, right? And then at level 25, you can either have like massive chronosphere if you're big into big things, or you can take 25% backtrack, which is, it's so underrated, right? Even something I heard recently that Skyrath ulti, because it's tick damage, void to straight up avoids. That sounds weird, but... 25% of like all the ticks it, it's I mean wait that would make sense anyway even if it was one shot oh no because it's reliable right it's a reliable 25% I just figured it out on my head guys Woo. but regardless yeah this hero's talent tree is insane it scales well farms well lanes well and I think that's a really big component when you get higher and higher MMR starting to understand you know what do you need to pick to actually sustain the lanes because if you do not sustain the lanes and you get crushed in lane you get crushed in the game it can become very miserable your team tilts out and then everyone hates each other reports you and you go into low pride then you cry in low pride because you understand that this is not what you're supposed to be doing with your life you should be investing in the stock market maybe going to day trades something that is actually useful and finally in the immortal bracket we have my favorite hero in dota right now i actually don't know if that's true but one of my favorite heroes in dota right now and that is gyrocopter i mean once again nico baby come on you guys know who he is at this point i just had been loving him watching him play and gyrocopter this is one of my best mmr heroes like when i was grinding mmr in the safe lane basically whenever i got forced to play safe lane previous to, to ranked roles when i was three four five k played a lot of gyro Right. Why? This hero, once again, very good laning stage. As long as you, you sort of chill in the early levels, just gotta chill, chill in the early levels, get to that level three, level five, boot stick stats point where you can actually fight and you dominate. Not only that, he is one of the best early to mid game fighters in the game. And you know what's crazy about Gyro? He's one of the best early to mid game fighters in the game, but also he's one of the best late game scaling heroes in Dota. What? Like, like, it's just crazy. I think he's like, he's like a top three early game, mid game fighting safe laner. And he's also like a potentially a top three late game safe laner as well. He's good early. I just don't know how I feel, but I think it's so flexible. You could pick a mid or safe lane. So it's good in a flex draft if you're playing with your friends. That's why it works as a first pick. You'll see a lot of pro teams, no joke, first picking gyro because it is that flexible. It's good in every single game. You can pick gyro no matter what. It's kind of similar to void in my opinion, where it's very, very flexible. These heroes just naturally have impact due to the fact that their spells deal a lot of damage and are hard to counter. Like what counters whatever, like 600 damage rocket barrage on a six second cooldown. Down. how you counter that it's very difficult you could be like oh oracle w <laughs> well, yeah, i mean he'll just put a rocket on you and you'll die and yeah that's going to be it for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed this this style of video where you know maybe you could look at your bracket and pick the hero and actually spam it if you guys want to win mmr you have to pick a hero and commit to it believe it or not I actually believe that and you should believe it too. Why? Because it, I've seen success with my students who have been able to do this and I'm trying to spread the good news to you as well. You have to legitimately learn 
your hero's spikes, your hero's item timings, when you should fight, when you shouldn't, what you should do in lane. There are a lot of questions to answer in Dota, so stop making it complex for yourself and start picking the carries I recommend today. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25% and start your journey today.